What's up guys, it's Friday. You know what that means. It's time for What The Fitness. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for the algorithm. This week we have Jason Whitrock. I've had his content sent to me a few different times, and I've never done a video on him, at least I don't, I don't think I have. So let's see what he has to say about childhood obesity. All right, I'm now going to be testing Dino Chicken Nuggets on my NutriSense Continuous Glucose Monitor. They are all natural, no antibiotics, no artificial flavors, no preservatives, omega-3s, made with white meat only, so that's good. The question is, what will it do to my blood sugar? So I'm gonna have the same serving size I would typically give my kids. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dinosaurs. I hope this is good. He has fabulous hair, I gotta Two say. Two hours later. Okay, this is both really bad and really sad. Obviously, I'm gonna blame the breading, not the chicken. I've seen lightly Looks breaded like a normal chicken nuggets at the grocery response. store, so I'll be going back to buying those. So I'm not gonna make any more comments about this. I'm just gonna remind you that childhood obesity and diabetes rates are skyrocketing in this country. And it's not because kids are eating too many calories. In fact, poor kids are affected the most. Listen, if you want some uh, more information or a plan calories. of action, please go to bloodsugarking.com. And he sells continuous glucose monitors. Shocker. If you guys have been following me for any period of time and you still think that calories don't cause ob obesity, overconsumption of calories, I, I don't really know what to tell you. Childhood obesity is increasing because children are becoming less active and they are eating more calories. The data backs this up and children in lower socioeconomic areas tend to eat more ultra processed foods, which are more calorie dense. So yes, calories do matter. Jason, I'm assuming based on him selling CGMs is big on monitoring blood glucose responses. Now I am not necessarily opposed to that. There are some people out there who kind of shame people who get CGMs because they say, well, they're, you know, taking them away from people who have diabetes, who, who need them. I don't know if there's like a shortage of CGMs, if that's the case or whatever. I'm open to like whatever helps somebody get healthier. And if monitoring blood sugar causes somebody to change their habits and behaviors in a gamified way, I don't have a problem with that. But what I will say is just because you have a blood sugar response, that's not the same thing as predicting fat storage. In fact, of the fat that is stored in adipose tissue, less than 2% originates as carbohydrate. And we know this from metabolic tracer studies. Over 98% originates from fat. Now, if you are eating a very high fat diet, and very low carb, you will not have much blood glucose response. But you do not require insulin to store fat in adipose. There's a protein called acylating protein, and it will store fat just fine in adipose with no insulin. There are benefits and trade-offs. If you're eating a low carb diet, the way it was intended to originally work, which is mostly unprocessed, low carb foods, you're probably gonna be pretty satiated. It's gonna be really hard to overeat calories and you're gonna eat less calories and lose weight. Perfectly good reason to do low carb. But if you're putting butter in your coffee, if you're eating pounds of bacon and you're eating very fatty meat and you're putting oil on everything, Ethan Suplee even talks about this on his weight loss journey. He lost weight to a certain point on low carb and then was convinced that it was the carbs and the vegetables he was eating rather than the oil he was dumping on his salad. Fats can be stored in adipose. Now, if you're eating low carb, you will have higher rates of fat oxidation. That's true, so you burn more fat, but you're also storing more fat because you're eating more fat. It is the balance between the amount of fat you store versus the amount of fat you burn that's gonna determine whether or not you gain, lose, or maintain body fat. Now, if you're eating a low fat, higher carb diet, you're not gonna burn a lot of fat because your insulin's gonna be higher, but you're also not gonna store a lot of fat because you don't really store dietary carbohydrate as fat. If you exceed your body's capacity to store it as glycogen, you have to oxidize it. And so since you're oxidizing carbohydrate, you're not oxidizing as much fat. So you're burning less fat, but you're also storing less fat because you're eating less fat. And what will determine the net gain or loss of body fat is going to be your energy balance. Are you consuming more calories than you are expending on a daily basis? Is that the worst thing I've ever seen? I'm not surprised that eating seven chicken nuggets increased his blood glucose up to about 150, 160. That Seems pretty normal to me, but I don't think that's why chicken nuggets are not a great source of food for kids. It's because chicken nuggets are calorie dense. He neglected to mention that yes, there's breading on there, but there's usually also a lot of fat in chicken nuggets. Now, I will say there are white meat chicken nuggets out there that are air fried, that are low in fat, 
and not super high in carbohydrate, and those may be better choices. I always am going to encourage people to eat minimally processed sources of food if they can. But I also live in the real world. And in the real world, your kids are going to get exposed to ultra processed foods unless you're like homeschooling them and not letting them around any of that stuff, which is a benefit, but then eventually they're going to go into the world. And if they've never been exposed to it, they may go crazy and not know how to handle it. So I think it's important to encourage consumption of minimally processed foods, fruits and vegetables, lean proteins, but I think it's also important to practice moderation with your kids and teach them appropriate portion sizes and how to manage their hunger cues because the reality is ultra processed foods aren't going away probably ever. So we need to figure out how to manage our satiety and our consumption in the reality of the presence of ultra processed foods. I don't believe in shaming certain foods. I don't believe in telling people you can never have something. I just believe in educating people about what the pluses and minuses are, what the real downsides are, again, calorie density, and having people make informed decisions based on their goals. All right, guys, if you're not sure where to start with your nutrition, for just 33 cents a day, Carbon Diet Coach, my nutrition coaching app can help. Whether you wanna build muscle, lose fat, or just maintain what you already have, Carbon can make it so easy. It's like a nutrition coach in your pocket algorithm-based custom nutrition coaching with the algorithm written by yours truly as well as some other smart people. And at only 33 cents a day, it is a steal. So you can click the link in the description to download and subscribe today and I'll catch you next week.